What's up, it's Brian here, and welcome to the first part of the ARKit Basics Tutorials. Today we'll be showing you how to do an AR button in ARKit. Um, I'm using Xcode Beta 2 for this, Xcode 9 Beta 2. Uh, you'll need iOS 11, of course, to build this to your phone. The demo I've just downloaded with the latest version, it's actually changed numerous times since I started learning ARKit on day zero. So forgive me if there's discrepancies, but Apple likes to update their demos quite a lot. Um, in the version I started learning on, there was only gesture.swift, and that had the function that we'll be modifying. Instead, now it's in single finger gesture.swift, and we'll be doing that for this example. The function we'll be modifying is finish gesture. Now, I'm showing you in the Apple provided example. This code that I'm showing you will work in any example provided you have a node or any type of AR object, because uh, this is for 3D, not 2D buttons, which already has a UI button built in. So. We'll go down here to the for loop, for result and results, and that is when the user touches the virtual object, it gets the result of the object that has possibly been touched, and we want to then do an action with it. Basically like a standard button, when you click on a screen it will do something, except the button is a 3D AR object, so you can't use a UI button. So, the syntax has changed a little bit in this. If you're using the old beta, it should be virtual object child node. In this example, it is uh, let object, so we'll be using object.childNode. So Apple already sets up all of this for you, so all we're adding is a simple if statement. That's it to get this working. Uh, just one if statement, basically, to make a button. It's uh, if object.childNode, and then see the autocomplete with name string recursively bool. We'll do that. Um, so with name, you need to find out what the name of your child node is. If you don't know what a child node is, you can check your .scene file, the provided one. And this chair is a virtual object that Apple's provided us with. Uh, chair seat, chair base, chair leg, all of these are child nodes on a basically one big 3D layer type system. So uh, child nodes can have also child nodes under it, so that's why there's a recursively function. We don't have any need for recursion, but we'll leave it true anyway. So we'll take chair seat, uh, just type that string in here. And then recursively bool, we'll set that to true. And then we'll check if this overall, this uh, object's child node, is equal to the result.node. Because the result.node is what we are touching. So we want to make sure that this object that we have here, that we want this object to do something if we touch it, if it matches the result that we've touched, then we can do that object. So that's what it would basically look like. I'll give you an example now if you want. Let's say you touch this AR object and it takes you to a web page. I actually use this. Um, for work. So it's just standard Apple syntax. Uh, why is this frozen? The joys of Xcodine beta. And that's my URL. It's that easy. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to do different things with the objects themselves, like transforming them, rotating them, changing opacity, and more. But for now, this few short lines of code, really just an if statement, is all you need to get an AR button working. And you can basically do this for as many child nodes as you want. If you want to do it uh, more programmatically, you can find the names by strings, by IDs, by anything else you want, with names just a built-in function. So hope this helped you out, uh, and I'll see you for the next video.